Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangle. Well, welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by Fully Funded Life. We are so fired up to help you win with money so that you can live a fully funded life. And today's episode is a big round number. It what is, is it? 200. It's 200. Way to go. 200 episodes of the podcast <laughs> helping you guys. I can't even believe that. That's unbelievable. When we first started this out, wasn't it like twice a month? It was every other week. Yep. Every other week. Mm-hmm. And so we had like three or four months where we did three episodes. I remember that. And then we went to weekly in the second year and off we've been going to weekly podcasts Never to back. help people win with money. And uh, as we're recording this podcast, uh, it's going to release May 2nd. Mm-hmm. And by that time, the twin boys are going to be here. Yes. But they're not here as the time of this recording. So we've prayed that we could be able to record this, make sure that this episode was kind of done and complete. Yes. Everything good? Yeah. You want to reveal the names on the podcast? No. It's not Jim, Bob, and Tom Cat. No. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Ronnie and Lonnie? <laughs> Ronnie. Okay. Uh, so tell everybody what we'll talk about today. Yeah. So today we're continuing our Money Lies series. And um, one misconception, a common misconception we incur as we coach people is that they think this doesn't apply to me. So today we are taking that lie and flipping it upside down. That's it. So you maybe you say, that doesn't apply to me. Yeah. I don't need to do that. Well, but that thing Joe's talking about, it doesn't apply to me. He's old. But it does. Or other people, that thing Joe's just said doesn't apply to me. He's young, <laughs> right? Depends on how old somebody is. Perspective. <laughs> and we're actually recording this on my birthday. We won't name what birthday it is. A but good, we a know good what, one. Huh? A good one. It's a good one. That's right. Every birthday is a good one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's that great time of the podcast. You know what time it is. Let's go. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. The Monday Money Tip podcast is sponsored by the Fully Funded Life Membership Program. The Fully Funded Life Membership Program provides all you need to begin winning with money and live a fully funded life. Fully Funded Life includes four key components, courses, challenges, coaching, and community. Courses provide financial education. Challenges help you make massive progress in a specific money skill. Coaching is provided by the Fully Funded Life Certified Coaches through open office hours held multiple times each month. All of the courses, challenges, and coaching results in an outstanding community that help equip, motivate, and encourage you to take your next financial steps toward your fully funded life. Fully funded life, courses, challenges, coaching, community. All that's missing is you. Learn more and receive a special offer for Monday Money Tip listeners today at fullyfunded.life slash MMT. That's www.fullyfunded.life slash MMT. All right, for today's current money event section, <laughs> we should say it, sing it to the happy birthday song since it's my birthday. You go for it. Current money event section. You got it. Current money event section. Current money event section. Current money event section. Was, was that pretty good? That was fantastic. That took some effort, actually. It- Flowed very well. Though. Yeah, I think I'm releasing a Christmas album singing. <laughs> Joe sings all the Christmas standards with accompaniment by the Fully Funded Life team. Okay. We should release that. That would be awesome. We're going to have to think about that one. <laughs> so for today's current money event section, uh, it is time to talk about uh, college and high school graduations. Can, Can you believe, believe that? It. Yep. Yeah. In fact, uh, just about seven days after this podcast releases, my daughter will be graduating from Wild. college. I feel like it was just high school. So I'm officially old, and we're very proud of her. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you have kids, grandkids, or friends with kids that are graduating, this can be an expensive time of year for you if you're not prepared properly. So how do you make sure you're prepared? Do you want to participate in this current money events section? Always. Okay, always. So tell us some ways that we can prepare. So budget. Yeah, you can budget. It's kind of a, like you might be saying like, duh, but are you? That's right. So a, <laughs> a graduation should be a known upcoming non-monthly expense, what we call those Q expenses. Hopefully it's, it's one not of those, happening every it, month. It fits in the special day category. Right. It is a so, special day. So making sure that you're saving for that is really important. Yeah. Even if you don't know the exact number of graduation parties you'll be invited to, you can at least estimate and set a budget 
for how much you will give each graduate. And if you have a close relative or a child graduating, which I do, you, and I, I always, I always get emotional when I hear the graduation music. It is why. something about it. It's dun, emotional. Dun, 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 oh, there you go. Yeah. Dun, dun. For a second, I was like, "Is this dun, the right song?" Dun, 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 dun. You know that song? Yeah. I do know that song. I've walked to it many times. I always, I always feel like it's singing. I'll always remember. <laughs> that is so. That's sad. what it is. I feel are like there that's words saying. to it? Yes, there are words to it. Mm. It's awesome. I don't we know what they look are up though. The lyrics. If there are not, I just wrote some of them. I think it's awesome. remember probably Joe is Sengel, in there. Your resident lyricist. Trademark. Okay, budget. <laughs> yes. So, so that's really important because if it's a kid or close relative, you're probably going to spend more money. You know, probably yeah. than the neighbors. Probably. <laughs> some some neighbors are awesome. Okay, what's what's the next one? All right, the next one is get creative. Yes, get creative. Now, graduates don't like creativity because they love receiving green cash. Rectangle things. Yes, rectangular <laughs> gift cards to their favorite store. However, it may not be an option for you, especially if you're kind of working on, you know, getting out of debt and all that. And if you have a Sam's Club or Costco membership, you can pick up those gift cards, you know, those multi-packs of mm-hmm. them. With a discount of up to 20% off the sticker value. It's a great way to save money on that. And you could buy a set of those and then split out the pack for four separate graduates. That's a great idea. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, and then you could also make an essentials or theme basket for the grad. And you can find great deals for home items at stores like Hobby Lobby, Home Goods, or Marshalls. If you like to crochet, like I do, you could crochet them something. That's true. I'm trying to think of things I got for high school graduation. I got luggage, which was needed. I got towels. Mm-hmm. People gave me towels, like embroidered towels. I still have the embroidered ones because they were like nice towels. Yeah. But it was like a, kind of a different gift. That is a different gift. I, I remember I got a briefcase. From high school or from yeah. college? I got a briefcase and I got luggage. My parents got me the luggage. My parents the, got me the luggage It was too. very clear. They had had boys in the house like, for 32 consecutive <laughs> years. They were throwing a party for themselves <laughs> and they didn't mask it with their gift to us. It was like, we love you. Get out. Here's Pack luggage. It up. <laughs> Pack it up. Get out. Right? It's time to wind it up. All right? And, and so, so think about those unique, because uh, if they're going to college, they're going to need that stuff. They're going to need it. Right? Uh, if they're going straight into the workforce and they're going to go get an apartment, that sort of thing, yeah. they're going to need a yeah. lot of different stuff. So basket's a good idea. That's awesome. Yeah. If they're going to trade school, te- technical college or whatever, a toolbox mm. filled good. with some tools, especially if you put some of grandpa's tools in there oh. or some of dad's tools, that'd yeah. be nice, right? I have grandpa's tools box. Meaningful. Very meaningful. Straight from Iowa. Yep. Okay. And the next one is plan ahead. Yes. If you are the parent of a grad, you need to be planning now for what's coming up. High schoolers usually graduate kind of late May, early June. Your, your college grad, you, you've got like a whole couple days to plan. They were, um, they were checked out already. You know, <laughs> f- for high schoolers, you know, make sure that you budget and save for dorm room essentials. If you have a college graduate, you want to say it may set aside money for moving expenses to help them relocate for their first job or to build a large barrier fence in your front yard so they don't move back. Oh, wait, <laughs> did I say that out loud? No, my daughter, she's made it clear. She's not, she's not coming back home other than to say hi. She got a so, house of her own. So She's plan good. ahead. Just think ahead, and I think it will help you. It is a wonderful time of year. And so graduation music, cue it. We out on current money events section. Current money events section. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> if you're looking the, for a little filler, though, in your uh, theme basket, we also have a book. Yes. That could be a great filler. Yes, what everyone should know about in money. The- before they enter the real world. Before. What a wonderful idea. It is a wonderful idea. Okay. Tell us a success story. I would love to. Okay. Our success story today is from Kim. And one month after she attended our financial learning experience, she wrote us to share her biggest win, which I always love hearing their biggest wins. She said, I have used my tax refund to pay off a credit card and put some money away. Thanks for all your help so far. I have definitely changed some bad habits. That's awesome. There's like a lot of things in there. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's only like three sentences, four maybe, but so she used her tax refund to pay off a credit card. That's huge. Yay. That's awesome. Put some money away. So she's yes, saving. Savings. And then, um, she's changing some of her bad habits. Yes. You know what? I, it makes me think that we should add a foundational element to the ladder. And Called, the foundational element is habits. Hmm, getting rid of your bad habits. Habits. Creating good habits. Good habits. Good habits are foundational, made out of really solid concrete granite. Bad habits are made out of quicksand, and they dissolve and cause the ladder to wobble. That's good. 
and you don't want it to wobble. You should write that down. That's awesome. Way to go, Kim. We're <laughs> celebrating. It really, let's put it in terms of the fully funded life ladder. She used tax refund to pay off credit card. That's rung for work. Mm -hmm. She put some money away. That's rung to work. And you helped us create a new foundational element to the ladder. Get That's fired up. Wrong tin work. That's awesome. So wrong tin. <laughs> down, down digging in the dirt. Awesome. So remind everybody what our core question is or issue that we're dealing with today. Yes. So um, we've heard people before say that doesn't apply to me when it comes to some of our topics. For example, some young people feel like investing for retirement doesn't apply to them because they're young. Or people who aren't struggling feel like they don't need to budget because they're not living paycheck to paycheck. So... Joe, what are some money skills and financial habits that people think don't apply to them? Well, Besides that's yourself. a great question. Yeah. So we're going to kind of rattle through this on this money lie that that doesn't apply to me. And it's a lot of times people don't even realize they're saying that. Mm -hmm. But it is. Like, have you ever been in a conversation that there's multiple people and the person starts talking about something and you just, you don't even realize it, but your brain turns off? Yes. Next thing you know, you're staring at your phone. Because <laughs> you're just waiting them out till they're done with that story. Because maybe you've heard that story before or you're like, hey, that doesn't really apply to me, yeah. you know, and it's not really so disrespectful for it because they've got five or other eager listeners, <laughs> right? So here's what I would say. I, I, when it comes to money, I see this happen a lot of times in our financial learning experiences mm -hmm. where people kind of tune out. You can tell they zone, zone out and they're like, well, that doesn't apply to me, particularly uh, people that are struggling with money. They kind of tune out on investing. Right. Oh, that doesn't apply to me. And what, what I encourage people to do is to... Make sure that they stop and evaluate why they are tuning out, particularly of, fun, of financial conversations, because a lot of times you're tuning out because it doesn't apply to you right now, and we want right now information. But I found that the people that are truly prospering are ones who start planning ahead of time, mm -hmm. the planners. And so that's really important to think about. So one of them is retirement. Uh, especially when I meet with young people. Right. I mean, when we go talk in high school. It's so hard to think that far in it, I, I get it. <laughs> I totally understand it. But you should be. But but it is relevant. Yeah, yeah. And the earlier they start, the better. And so I try to get their attention by showing them a compound interest calculation where they do $100 a month for, for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then I show them $100 a month for 60 years, which a lot of them have that option. Mm -hmm. Or 55 years. And it is powerful to at least get their attention a little bit. Right. Um, so, so that I would say some people uh, would say planning for vacation doesn't matter to them because they've just decided they're not going to go on vacation. They've just given up hope of going on vacation. I've seen that. Mm -hmm. Others will say uh, insurance. Mm -hmm. Like they don't even want to think about calling the insurance agent. It just intimidates them. Uh, real estate is another one. They'll hear somebody talk about a real estate investment and they're like, that doesn't apply to me and they're out. But if they own a house or hope to own a house someday, they are going to be a real estate investor. Right. They don't realize it, but they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think that's good. And I think it's finding ways to engage them in those moments. Like, like you said, like with retirement, with compound interest, finding ways to show them that, hey, it might not be your right now season, but it's going to be your future season. And if you prepare now, right. what do we say? Do today what you wish you would have done. Ten years, Ten years ago. Yeah. That's great. So, so I, I know this. It is it. I, I get this lie because mm -hmm. I'm this type of person. I think I'll, I think more humans are like this than Some of the other than ones. the others. Yeah. Because if it's not right now relevant, it's hard for me to give attention to it. Yeah. I mean, you you've seen that trying to put you know you've got to write this course, mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, that's not right now relevant. That's like two whole weeks from now. <laughs> so I'm going to write this other thing that's like due tomorrow. Yeah. And it's hard for me to give thought to that. Right. But when I do get in that, that groove of writing and I get that stuff written, I find that if I've written it ahead of time and I have the chance to review it again and then review it again, the content is just so much better mm -hmm. because there's this marinating effect. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I want to tell everybody who's, who keeps pushing off learning about money stuff. Are you prospering? Hmm. Because I will tell you, spenders feel like they can just, oh, I don't have the money for it. Well, well when I need the money for it, I'll just, go, I'll just go earn it. I'll just go work extra, sell more, and I, I will somehow earn my way out right. of this mess or earn my way to fund this thing. Mm -hmm. And they've done that several times. That's what enhanced their willingness to think that way. But I would just say, just, just think about marinade. When you marinate that steak, 
<laughs> when you marinate that chicken breast with some, you know, Olive Garden Italian dressing, woo, <laughs> it is unbelievable. And then you get that in there for like a couple hours, and then it's uh, it is a lot different than if you're just applying it. It's right true. when you start to cook it. And that's what we want you to do is we want you to be thinking ahead on this. But I think everybody in in this in the seasons wants like all high schoolers want to be quote unquote rich when they're older. You know, like they all want the money. All of them. They all you know, like <laughs> like everybody wants um to be able to go on vacation, even if they're not willing to say Right. You know, like everybody wants these things and so it's like well you can have them. Let's talk about how it can apply to you. So, um, but what would you say to someone who says they don't need a budget because they're not struggling financially? That's a great question. So That's a good, th- that is a great get. one that yeah. doesn't apply to me. <laughs> so, and that is, that is one of those challenges. And I see this with high income producers. They're like, you know, I don't struggle to pay my bills. I don't need a budget because mm-hmm. they have mistakenly bought into a lie that budgets are for broke people Mm. and you know i earn extra money and so i've i've got extra money and i've met with people who should be high net worth individuals and they have a million dollars and they're so proud they have a million dollars and i'm like but with your income and your age Mm. you you could have had 10 million Mm. but they they have just spent their money to oblivion because they've never had a plan yeah and one story that I remember just distinctly, I remember sitting with this guy and he only, he only earned $350,000 a year. That's all he earned. Take home pay. Mm-hmm. Is, is that good? I'm just, <laughs> is that still good? Yeah. Okay. Cause it was like 10 years ago. So, yeah. you know, and he, he, he felt like he needed more income and I'm looking at and counting up five car payments. A cell phone bill that's bigger than the average mortgage. Oh you know, it's like it it, it it becomes this. It doesn't apply to me. I don't need a budget. But for some reason, the person sitting in front of me and they've asked for this appointment because I didn't demand they meet with me <laughs> and they're meeting with me. And I'm saying to them, hey, you need to have a plan for every dollar because you can't hope to maximize your money. And, and I will say for any person who does not have a budget and you're doing really well and you're prospering, absolutely you can prosper without a budget. You can do that. But you can't ever look somebody in the eye and say, I've maximized every dollar. And like you can when you have a budget because a budget gives you this two-word phrase that I like. It makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to all of our listeners, and that is financial confidence. And financial confidence is birthed out of knowing where every dollar is going, knowing that the dreams are getting funded, that you've thought through the this or that. Should I fund this? Should I fund that? Mm-hmm. And and you've made these decisions. And that just gives you confidence. You have financial confidence because of that. I have financial confidence because of that. And so I would just say, hey, y- 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 yes, you can get the hall pass, podcast listener. I'm looking at you if you're on YouTube. <laughs> You can get a hall pass and pass on doing a budget. You know, you're doing great. Congratulations. But do you want to do great and and do great and not do budgeting? Or would you rather learn a basic skill of budgeting, spend 30 to 45 minutes a month preparing that budget, and know that you know that you are maximizing every dollar and that you are you are going to kill it with the great income that you've been blessed with? Hmm. And for me, you know... Do I need to have a budget? I say yes, because I'm still a spender. Yeah. But, you know, I do a budget because I've not found a better way to maximize my money. And I want to maximize the dollars. Mm-hmm. We work hard for it. We want to maximize it. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so sometimes people say that doesn't apply to me because they've skipped rungs on the ladder. Ooh. Mm. So, for instance, sometimes people on rung five have skipped rungs one and two maybe thinking they're not as important. So what happens when people skip rungs on the ladder and what are some of the pitfalls with skipping rungs? That's great. So rung number five, let's remind everybody for those who are newer to the podcast, rung number five is building your savings to a minimum of three months Mm -hmm. worth of expenses. For the average family, it's 10 to $20,000 sitting in a savings account. And they've got that, but they've skipped rungs one and two. Rung one is setting your goals, writing down your plans, hopes, and dreams. Mm -hmm. And rung two is 
it is it really is they've skipped rung three mm-hmm. I think is the best way to say it here uh, that they have. They've stopped. They, they do not contribute enough to get the company match in the retirement account. They're only saving. Yeah. They're not focusing on investing. Right. So, you know, what happens when they skip rungs on the ladder? Well, and what are some of the pitfalls? I would tell you this. You can skip rungs. You can. But would you skip rungs on a real ladder? No. I mean, what would that be like? Hey, I'm just going to I'm going to take a flying leap and jump to rung five. Well, I mean, my two-year-old thinks it's a yes, great idea. Right. Yeah, it, I guess you he's three You know why? Because he's male. Why. He's why. And, and <laughs> I'm youngest of six boys. And this would never happen when you're working solo out in the yard. <laughs> but you get two or three boys out there, they're going to say, hey, y'all, watch this. It happens with girls, too. Like, my little daughter was being chased by the boys in the house and all this stuff. And then I'm outside. It was a summer gathering. And I saw her leaping out of her window. Oh, my God. And I'm like, what is going on? And I realized, like, I'm like, there's a screen. How? There was the a girl screen. Had saw a screen in her way. She thought this was a wonderful way to escape. So she went and got scissors and cut a very large hole in the screen so that she and her friends could escape. Hey. She would. She never does that by herself, <laughs> but with friends, right? Sounds so, like so it's idea. really important to think about that. And I think that's the same thing when you're skipping rungs. You end up cutting holes in the screen. Right. Mm. And and it feels good at the time. Oh, this was awesome. I escaped. This is great. And then in the summer, you raise the window and you've got, you know, the flying (laughs) plague of locusts in your house. And you're like, this was a terrible idea. Why did I do that? I think we also see it when people try to jump to rung four and paying off their debt and they don't have savings. And they're like, oh, I'm making such great progress on my day on my debt. And then an emergency comes and you don't have any money saved. And you're like, "Uh oh, now what do I do? Yeah. Then you have to go back into more debt or you feel like you have to go back into more debt to help pay for that expense you didn't see coming or. So that's know. really important. Yeah. Like what you just mentioned, this m- many people, that's the most common one that they right. jump to. They mm-hmm. jump straight to rung four because debt carries such a negative emotion with it. When people get angry, frustrated, they want to pay debt, humiliated, ashamed of their debt. They're like, I got to get rid of this mm-hmm. debt. I know I need to save money. I know I should be getting this free money in the company match. I know I should take time to write down my plans, hopes, and dreams, but I don't have time for that. I need to attack this debt. <laughs> and and they'll, they'll meet you. They're, we've met with them, and they've skipped yeah. the rungs. And, oh, man, we're making such progress on the on the debt payoff. Woo, it's awesome. Next month. so bro- And the next month, they avoid you. They won't even look at you. They're walking on the other side of you at church, in like, the mall, happening? at Target. And you're like, what's going on with them? They seem huh. to be, They some seems to have changed in our <laughs> relationship dynamic here. And what happens is when you find out, it's like, well, my car broke down and I had no savings. And then I had to pull out the credit card. This stuff doesn't work. And And it's like, "Mm -hmm." no, you went out of order. Yeah. So it does apply to you. Go in order. So the latter applies to you. Yep. All right. And sometimes people say that doesn't apply to me as an excuse to tune out certain financial topics in education. You kind of mentioned that earlier. They think it's not relevant to their current financial situation and why is it important to learn about financial situations that are different from your own? So we kind of hit on this a little bit, but I feel like we can go a little bit more in depth on it. So, so I, I'm, I'm an open book. I probably overshare. Am I an overshare of information at times? Yeah, maybe, maybe, but not, I share like, you know, I have all these investments, but I, I don't share. I'm definitely not sharing it to brag. Mm -mm. I'm sharing it as a, as I jump off point for people, because investing questions are 10 to one outnumbering any others. And I want people to have a a good starting spot. They've worked well for me. I don't know if they work well for other people, but I remember the day when I had no clue Mm -hmm. about anything with investing. And the same thing, when I think about the current financial situation, not applying, like I I talk about rental real estate Mm -hmm. and I share it with our team. You've heard it. You you know, it's like, Oh, here goes Joey's talking about this again. But I share it because, you know, I've heard other people early on in conversations talking about their rental property. And I'd be like, huh, that's intriguing. Like, I have no money. It doesn't apply to me right now. But I'm going to listen. And I find that when you hear other people's financial journeys, other people's financial stories, when you tune into podcasts of, you know, there's numerous podcasters talk about their money journey. The numerous podcasters talk about different types of investing, including real estate or stocks or whatever, that you you will pick up little nuggets. It's like nuggets that help you. And it's in it's in that process. I, I mean, this summer, I'm going to be with the Boy Scouts 
and we're going on an amaz- amazing trip uh, yeah. to Juneau, Alaska. It's and awesome. we booked a gold panning and salmon bake excursion. We're guaranteed to find gold in the pan. So I don't know what that means. I think they're, I don't know if they put it in there or not. <laughs> but here's what I know. Um, when you're gold panning, you're looking for the little fleck of gold. Mm-hmm. And there's a whole lot of worthless rocks in there and rubble, although I'm fascinated by all the rocks. <laughs> but you find that little piece of gold and it stares at you and it winks at you. You're like, hey, that. You understand why people get gold fever. <laughs> and here's what I know. In the same way, that's what I view financial knowledge as. You're sorting through a lot of rubble. Mm-hmm. But when you find that nugget that actually helps you, it makes you become a better pay attentioner. Did you like that? That's a thing. I'm not sure that's the right word. It's a pay or tincher. Pay or tincher. Yeah. (laughs) And it helps you start saying, you know what? These people are different than me. But I've said all the time, there's a million one ways to make money in America. Mm. Pay attention to people. You just may find something you could bolt on to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That will be a big help to you. Yeah. I, yeah, I think too. I mean, one of the reasons, so specifically in Fully Funded Life, we have courses on all rungs of the ladder. And I think one of the reasons that we do that, even though knowing a lot of people are maybe on rungs one through six, seven, you know, there's not, we have people that are on rung eight and nine for sure, but a lot of people are working their way up the ladder. Um, but I think the reason that we include it all and the reason that we want to help people with financial, conf- like financial confidence and financial education is because there's steps that you need to take now to prepare yourself for those steps in the future. Exactly. So you can't necessarily get to those higher rungs without making the steps. And it's nice to know what steps you need to take to get to those so that when you do get to them, you're prepared and you're not yes. like, oh, I wish I would have started that then. Absolutely. So that I could have been prepared for this. And so it's... I know sometimes it seems overwhelming. Well, I'm not at investing, so I don't, well, you should be at investing or I'm not at paying off my house. So I I don't need to focus on that one. Well, one day, wouldn't you like to pay off your house? Yeah. So like, let's get you prepared now so that you can work on the wrong you're on. And and that is a huge statement. And that's what I do encourage people to do is everything in life, either directly or indirectly costs money. Right. True or false. True. True. So why would you not? allocate a certain percentage of your time every month to continuing to learn about this thing that is going to power Mm -hmm. your ability to move towards your plans, hopes, and dreams. I mean, we definitely spend time on how to educate our kids. When it first starts out, it's like getting our kids to sleep. (laughs) Then it's like, how do I get them potty trained? Right. But then we, we want to educate them. And then when you've got the, the aggressive one, you know, how do you communicate with them? When you've got the, uh, the, the one that stares in the clouds, (laughs) <laughs> you know, and they can't seem to get focused how to help them the most mm-hmm. and help them succeed. We study that a lot. Let's make sure we study the financial stuff too. Right. Not, I'm not saying it's equally as important, but it is definitely wildly important. Mm-hmm. So do that. Yep. And don't say the money lie. That doesn't apply to me. Because it does. So the quote for today is actually my financial life verse, mm-hmm. Proverbs 21.5. The plans of the diligent lead to profit, but... But as surely as haste leads to poverty. Mm. And I like this here. It kind of threw me off. I was reading it's it here. It's a different version. Because she pulled up a different <laughs> version. So I'm going to read the different version. And that, I read the NIV 2011. It says, the plans of the diligent certainly mm. lead to profit. Ooh, <laughs> certainly. But anyone who is reckless certainly becomes poor. Yeah, Woo. I like that one too. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Yep. All right, our next episode, we're going to talk about another money lie. So we're going to talk about the money lie. They don't need to know about this. So we're talking specifically about hidden debt. So. Yeah, they don't need to know about this. So they being like their spouse, spouse, their family, that sort of thing. Hey, if you like today's episode, please help us get this podcast to other people who you believe who could benefit. The greatest thing that you could do to honor this podcast is to share it with your friends. That'd be incredible. We'd feel so honored if you did that. Also, you can leave a review. Those ratings and reviews help the algorithm that promotes it to other people. If you're on YouTube, you can click the subscribe button. Leave a comment on there. Uh, What is the one thing that you would encourage with others that you once said that doesn't apply to me and you found out it really applies to you now that you want to make sure that they hear? Comment on that. And also, as we wrap it up, we want to say it's been an honor and privilege to serve you for 200 episodes. So if you're up for it, we'll go 200 more. Get fired up. (laughs) 
Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.